In this video, I'm going to talk about two extremely important data types called arrays and pointers in C++. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge three very important professors I have had in my life. From the University of Toronto, Dr. Olivier St. Cyr, who introduced me to pointers and for showing me memory models that help making learning programming more concrete and less abstract. Dr. Elliot Colesill for letting me use Lego in one of his final exams to build packets. Elliot, when the space industry is done with you, education needs you back. And finally, to Kathy Leung, who taught me that data structures can be learned with yellow sticky notes and whiteboard arrows. If you learn anything from these videos, it's because I learned it from some of the very best educators around. I owe them everything. In the first two videos, I spoke a lot about variables, but I briefly introduced the idea of initializing a variable. It may seem somewhat semantic, but when I initialize a variable, what I am saying is that I am giving it an initial value, but it is not the same as an equal sign. What it is doing is assigning a new value to the variable name for future use. It is a subtle difference upon first glance, but once you assign a value or initialize a variable, you can then make a comparison for equality. For example, after the assignment, you can test whether 25 is now equal to num. Two equal signs means they are in fact equal, or not equal written here as not equal to. In the last video, I spoke about variables and the four components of a variable. But when we talk about arrays, there is one further item that all arrays have, and that is what we refer to as an element, and we move through each element by moving its index. But we'll learn how to cycle through an array in the next video. So what is an array? You have likely heard the word before, but in a programming context, I simply define it as a collection of elements of the same data type. When do we use them? Whenever we have multiple records of the same exact data type. For example, when you are recording things like people's ages or temperature readings, you would collect all of that raw information inside an array variable. This is very useful when you have hundreds, thousands, or even millions of elements in your array. Let's look at an analogy that demonstrates an array and show a side-by-side -side comparison of how it possesses the same components of a regular variable we have already seen. Suppose you have a complex of row housing or townhouses. The complex itself has one street address, while each unit has its own unit address. In the case of an array, we call these elements. Notice they start with zero and not one. That is intentional and all array elements start with element zero. Notice in our example, we are calling it family size because here we are going to record the number of family members that live in each unit. As you can see, the array syntax specifies the size of the array, or the number of its elements, in this case four. Note, not all elements are predefined, but we'll get to dynamic memory in arrays soon enough. For now, I have four elements, and I want to record each value per element. And as expected, the array has also a data type. I chose an int because a person is a whole person, not a fraction of a person. While I move on to the subject of pointers, keep in mind that the array is no different than any normal variable, except for the amount of values we can have. It is no coincidence that I have introduced the topic of arrays with pointers, and by the end of this video, you'll see how this relationship works. So what exactly is a pointer, and why does it cause so much anxiety for new programmers? Truthfully, in my opinion, it is because it appears to be a highly abstract concept in programming. My goal here is to convert that abstraction into something absolutely concrete for you so that pointers become relatively easy to understand. A pointer is a variable that holds an address as its value. Let's refer back to basics to show you what I mean with a simple memory model. We know that every variable has a name, a type, address, but what about its value? The value is an address to another variable. It doesn't hold its own address. It holds that address of another variable, while it also has its own address in a separate location in memory. Now seems like an appropriate time to introduce two operators 
that are commonly needed when using pointers. The first is the address of operator. Associating the image of a mailbox has always helped me remember that the syntax is actually to use an ampersand. The second is the contents of operator, also known as the dereferencing operator. Before we look at a practical example, please remember this rule. Always initialize your pointers to a value. If you don't have one immediately, use null. This is a very important rule to remember. Never leave your pointers left to wander alone inside your memory. Let's look at some examples from previous videos. Here we have int num equals 25. It's a four byte integer and it has an address of 0x01, char letter A, and an address of 0x05, and finally a float named pi with an address of 0x06. And as you can see, there is a lot of bits for these three simple variables. I'd like to take a deeper look at the num variable and as you can see, it's a very typical integer variable that has been initialized to 25. Now, let's look at how the pointer variable works. We start with our num variable, but then we create another variable, which is a pointer called asterisk ptr num. There are a few things here to note before continuing. First, I'm putting the asterisk in front of the variable name. Second, when I create this variable, I initialize it to null. Illustrating this as a memory model, here's how it looks. But my goal is to point to the other variable called num, and to do this, I need to initialize my pointer using the address of operator and variable name. Here's the updated memory model. Look at the new value of the pointer itself. It's the address of the num variable. At this point, you might be curious as to why you would ever do this instead of just creating another variable versus pointing to one? It's a great question, and one that we'll go much further into when we get to functions. In the future, you may also learn about data structures and algorithms, and that topic is primarily about dealing with pointers. But for now, look at this slide and consider this question. Would it be better to consume more wasted space in memory, or just point to where the information is already stored and use that? Using our variable in pointer, let's look at an example of how this is used. Here is a chart of the variables we've discussed. Note again the value assigned to the pointer is the address of the num variable. But what I want is access to the num variable's value 25. In order to get that, I need to dereference the variable using the asterisk. If I don't use the asterisk, I just output the address of the num variable. Remember in the beginning I said it was no coincidence that we're talking about arrays and pointers? Now it's time to talk about why. Returning to our original array example, family size, we see what looks like four integer elements, but with only one address, 0x24. What happens when I try to just print the variable family size to my console? Thus far, I think you would expect to see 6345 printed out. Unfortunately, this would not be the case. In fact, what you would get is the address of the array itself. Let's create a pointer variable called PTR array, or pointer array, and see if I can initialize the pointer with the address of operator, or ampersand, in the array family size, then see what the result is. But take a moment and think about this very carefully. We just saw that by printing out the array family size just returned the address. Do I really need to use the ampersand with family size? The answer is no. In fact, you will get a compiler if you do so. And this is one more reason why many people struggle with pointers. It gives the perception that it's violating its own rules, but in reality it is not. For one simple reason then that is, an array is a pointer. It may take some time to get accustomed to this concept, so this will require some practice. Let's go over to Visual Studio and try this out on the variables we have been using thus far. We'll start again with our first variable, int num equals 25, and then create a pointer called ptr num equals ampersand num. Notice this time where I place the asterisk. It's immediately after the data type int. 
This is to demonstrate that you can use this format for creating a pointer. It is a personal preference. Here, I am initializing the pointer to the address of the variable num on line 10. When we compile the code, we see that we get the value of num because we are dereferencing the pointer by using the asterisk. If I attempt to use the ampersand on num on line 13, I logically get the address of num. If you are ever confused, consider the ampersand as a mailbox. You can get the address from the front of a mailbox or look inside the mailbox and get the contents. This is a good time also to tell you that once you create the pointer for the first time with the asterisk, you don't need to keep using it. This is why I've personally adopted the naming convention PTR, short for pointer, with all my pointer variables. It helps me to avoid a lot of confusion when using pointers later. As you know, a pointer is a variable that holds an address as its value. But can I access the address of the pointer itself? The answer is yes. On line 16, I'm using the ampersand with PTR num to access the address of the pointer from line 10. I think now is a good time to circle back to our array called family size. On line 20, I'm attempting to print the array values to my console, but as we saw earlier, I'm only going to get the family size address, not the value. Out of curiosity, what if I try to use the ampersand with family size? I get an error because the array is already a pointer address. I don't need the redundant ampersand for getting the array address. Before we finish off in this video, I want to quickly show you how we can print the variables in each element of our array. We use something called a for loop, which will be an important subject in the next video. For now, rest assured that whenever you see an array, you will likely see a for loop nearby in order to populate or access the values of the array elements. In other words, a for loop is typically how we interact with array values. For the purpose of showing you how to print the values of family size to your console, here is a simple for loop. In the next video, we will talk about the for loop, while and do while loops, as well as when to use them. There was a lot of content to digest in this video. I strongly suggest you watch it again and practice with Visual Studio until you are more comfortable with arrays and pointers. If you can print an address and dereference a value, you should have no problem using pointers after that. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you again when we talk about loops.